Okay, how's it going? And welcome back to the channel for what seems like a pretty long time. Anyway, I'm back and it's time to look at the more recently released Creation Club content. And before I start, a special thanks to Dream Operator 23, Wibbit Guy and Red How for all the help they gave me putting this together. Cheers guys, and I love you. Now some of this lot looks quite decent indeed, and some of it not quite so much. This latest batch includes Saints and Seducers, which contains multiple quests, a new dungeon, two artifacts, several new sets of weapons and armor, recruitable pets, alchemy ingredients, summoning spells, etc. Then we have Dead Man's Dread, which includes, includes two weapons, new outfits, as well as a, a new home. The Grey Cow Returns, which allows you to become the legendary Grey Fox, or at least wear his cow. Hendraheim, a new player home, and finally, two alternative armor sets of steel and ebony. So there's a huge amount for us to look at, but today we'll be looking at goblins, which adds new enemies into the game, Goff, a new follower, a new staff, and a new ingredient. And all that comes in 400 credits, which is around $4 or three pounds in real money. And is, as far as I'm aware, the first true follower mod from Creation Club. And as it's someone that loves using followers and pets, etc., probably the one I'm most interested in. And I'll be doing a comparison towards the end of this video between this goblin follower and a reekling that you can already get in the game. So you can choose whether you want to spend your money or not. And the quest was by Chris Takahashi, whose name seems to ring a bell somehow from somewhere. And the art support was by LEH. So let's go and see if they've got it right. Okay, so as usual, the quest is automatically put into your quest list. And that is something I want to talk a little bit about later as well. Anyway, you must travel to Riften to the b and Barb Inn next to the marketplace. Head upstairs where you'll find a note written by the skull Avanessa Caladius, telling of a rumour about a tribe of goblins and their blue god living in the caves of the Gerald Mountains along Skyrim's southern border. Once read, this will show you the location of where these mysterious goblins can be found, which is at Grom's Pass in the aforementioned Gerald Mountains, and is not far from the Shadow Stone, which is quite near Riften anyway, and is a fairly uneventful journey. On entering the cave, it was pointed out to me by Dream Operator 23 that this is a loose copy of the original cave of the first dungeon in Oblivion, where you find the Goblin Shaman, and it's the Oblivion dungeon music to boot, which is a really nice touch. Anyway, you will come across several goblins which you'll have to, to defeat. You'll also find the body of the previously mentioned Avanessa Cladius. Now, make sure you read all the notes and all the journals along the way. It gives this short but sweet quest a little bit of context. And also take the time to pick up all the mushrooms you see whilst you're there. Anyway, you'll have to go through a few chambers fighting goblins and eventually come across the blue god himself, who actually turns out not to be a god after all, surprise, surprise. So deal with him, grab the goblin totem off his body and read his journal before heading down to the fighting pit where you'll meet Goff, your shiny new pet follower. And you can ask him to follow you or not if you so wish. So let's take a look at what you get for 400 credits, a new ingredient, a new staff and goff a goblin follower we'll take a look at the ingredients first and it's called a steel blue entoloma which restores magicka resists frost and fortifies destruction and carry weight now this character has little or no xp or perks in alchemy so i haven't played around with this yet but if rare curios is anything to go by it could well be a little stronger than the standard in-game ingredients but don't hold me to that now as far as i'm aware these will respawn in the usual way and as soon as i get a chance to play around with this i'll let you know Next up is the Goblin Totem Staff, which is another artifact from Oblivion. Now I have to say the artwork and modeling on this is fantastic, a really good job for sure. It's a relatively powerful staff and very decent for low level characters. It fires 
uh, lightning bolts which will jump from enemy to enemy now the text here says 50 damage but I'm sure it should be 40 uh, and I don't have any perks in destruction so I could be wrong however don't be surprised if your uh, figures give you different stats anyway that aside let's take a look at it in action now I've chosen the bandits behind white run as my test bunnies as they are a fairly tough test to uh, try stuff out on I have to say that I personally would never recommend using staff like this in third person as it aim as it makes aiming very difficult well for, for me at least but for the purposes of this video I will and as you'll notice at this level it does seem to do uh, fairly decent damage So there you go, it does the job reasonably well and, and all in all a decent stuff and as I said earlier it's very good for low level characters and boy it's a fine looking thing to behold for sure. Okay so now the thing we're really here for and that is Goff and as mentioned before I'll be doing a head to head between him and a Reeklin later. He can be recruited as a follower once you finish the quest and significantly he is essential so you can't lose him in a fight. He carries the Spear of Bitter Mercy, a Daedric artifact on his back. During combat he will summon a Storm Atronach to aid you. And he stabs his enemies with a spear at close range, but will not throw the spear the way a Reichlin does. So he is close combat uh, only. If you dismiss him or lose him, he will return to Grom's Pass and you can get him back there. The goblin model looks great, but I agree with Red Hell that he's a bit bigger than I imagined and clearly based on the Reekling model. Not that that's a problem though. There are several dialogue options open to you, such as you can ask about his spear and you'll get no response, just a few goblin sounds. He won't trade with you, he'll just make little goblin noises and either ignore you or occasionally give you a human skull for some really weird reason. But he does pretty much more or less what every other follower does. Now you can customise his armour to wear things like iron, leather, a skull helmet, no armour and or no helmet etc. But, and it is a big but, you can't give him any other weapons or armour to use and as far as I can tell well if, as far as protection goes anyway I don't think it matters what armor set he's wearing it's just cosmetic just as an aside this mod is meant to release more enemies into the game now I've never come across any yet but according to Wibbit Guy he has found some at the southwestern gate of Skyrim near Hamersham southwest of uh, Fort Creef now I bring this up because I use the Felcreath Cottage mod which is exactly at this point so if you do use that mod life could be a little more interesting uh, every time you go home from now on. So let's take a look at Goff in action. Okay, before we get into my thoughts on this mod, let's take a look at a direct comparison with Goff and my Arikling Cedric. Now, Goff's positives are he conjures an Atronach in battle and a Storm Atronach to boot, one of my favourite Atronachs, has a powerful weapon, there's no heavy breathing, his voice isn't loud and grating, he is essential and he has a slightly wider range of dialogue. 
his negatives are he will not carry your burdens you cannot equip him with enhanced armor or weapons which makes him less viable at higher levels he goes down too quickly against too many enemies to be a real help and especially once his atronach has uh, uh, gone after 60 seconds and he has a slow recovery so stays out of the fight for a long time once down and when he recovers he's knocked down again extremely quickly now let's turn our eyes to Cedric, my little reekling. He is, well for the positives anyway, he is obtainable in the game for free. He seems much stronger than a goth with a health of 352 and a stamina of 188. Can be equipped with craftable and enchanted weapons and armor which makes him far more viable later on in the game. In fact it turns into a bit of a beast if you do it right. He has uh, built in resistance of frost and the NPC perks of critical hit and extra damage uh, are applied to him and he will trade and carry stuff for you. His negatives are he is not essential but I use a mod that makes him so. He won't use a staff um, so he can't summon an Atronach. Constant heavy breathing and there is a distinct lack of a dialogue. So there's a decent comparison. So you can make the choice between a, a Reekling or a Goblin. And that brings me to my final thoughts on this mod. Uh, but before I start, I would just like to say that I think Bethesda should think about having a notice board in one or all of the holds in Skyrim where quests for the Creation Club mods can be found. I think it would be better than having your quest log rammed with Creation Club quests as soon as you activate them as, as well as all the others you pick up on the way it gets extremely cluttered anyway it's not a biggie it's uh, I just think it'd be nice and I thought I'd mention it anyway back to this mod well for 400 credits you're getting a short but sweet quest a, a very decent staff a, a new ingredient which hopefully we'll find out more about later and for the first time a new follower I have to say the modelling and skins are really well done, irrespective of whether it's based on the Reeklings or not, and the, the, the modelling on the staff is superb. I love the fact that he summons Natronax, so if you imagine, if you have a follower that uses Conjuration, summons up Atronax, or at least a staff, plus if you have twin souls, then essentially you can bring four Atronax to the party, which is awesome. So in that regards, I really can see the value on this mod. However, Goff seems as weak as a weak thing, getting taken down by almost everything and due to the fact that you can't protect uh, and improve him with enhanced armors or weapons and the fact you can't even use him to carry stuff really makes me doubt his use usefulness uh, past a midpoint in the game. Now, if you can't be bothered to do the whole Thirst Mead Hall quest to get a Reekling, then sure, Goff will be a great addition to your team. Now, I'm not saying Goff is bad at all. I'm really not. In fact, he's a very decent little follower. But for me personally, seeing as I can make him essential with other mods, I can massively improve his arm protection and damage output by crafting gear for him. I'll be sticking with uh, my little Cedric, my little blue gonk, as I see him being far more viable for later stages in the game. But whatever route you take, you won't be disappointed. I hope you enjoyed this video, and more importantly, you found it useful. Catch you later. Love you.